Welcome to Film Riot. Today we're taking a look at five of my favorite filmmaking tricks that we've done over the past almost 10 years of Film Riot. But first, I changed my shirt. It could be because we're shooting this part on a different day, or it could just be because I wanted wardrobe change and I'm gonna change back to the original shirt again in a minute. It's up to you to decide. But the point is, if you are an independent filmmaker of any kind, you should be checking out the New Vision International Film Festival. The festival is located in Amsterdam and supports both short and feature films. They also have special categories for VR, special effects, web series, video clips, and animation. This year, the festival has several prominent attendees, including Emmy winners, Grammy winners, Tony winners, and filmmakers whose work has appeared in the Cannes Film Festival. So check out their website in the notes below and submit your films today. And the first of my favorite tricks is one of the most simple ones, not something that I use all the time, but is so helpful in a visual effect or just in a style, and that is a whip pan. We've shown this on the show a few times, shown how one actor can look as though they throw something dangerous at another, like an ax, and just through a whip pan and a cut, it looks like that the other actor actually caught the ax. Or it could just help bring your actor from one location to another in a very fluid and stylistic way. One of my favorite, very stylistic uses of whip pans is from Edgar Wright. He's made it so specifically his in how he uses whip pans and even snap zooms in his work that whenever anybody else does it, it just feels like Edgar Wright. But it just goes to show you how you could take one very simple technique and make it very specifically yours if you do it to your tone and to your style. We also use whip pans into digital whip pans for UFO Yeah when switching from our actor to the digital model that we had in that scene as well. So there's so many different uses for for it. Although it seems very simple, it's something that can be very effective in a whole lot of ways. My second one is one that we did a very long time ago when we still lived in Florida, but it's still one of my favorite tricks that we pulled off, and that is using a stop motion technique for this effect right here. So I wanted Josh to fly through the scene and we tried a bunch of different things, nothing was working, but then we came up with this idea to have him sit on a stool and we move him through the scene and move the camera through the scene, creating this stop motion moment that I could cut together later, seamlessly toss on some motion blur and it worked so effectively. I was actually surprised at how well it's worked. I've used versions of this in different ways over the years, including just making objects move on their own, but this is still my favorite use of that. And then there was also this, Josh's feet. So dirty. So... Why were your feet so dirty? Um, at that point in my life, I was also a Flintstone. Oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. actually. So that's how you got around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. My third favorite is a technique that we have shown on Film Riot, but also something that I utilize for a larger budget project as well. On Film Riot, we turned our warehouse into a jungle at night. It was a small space, but we were able to make it seem like our characters were moving through this jungle setting just by running the same sequence over and over again and just moving those branches and such around that we pulled in from the outside and then just some dark lighting. It's crazy how effective it can be if you set it up right, use foreground, midground, and background to create a sense of depth and light the whole thing Thing dark enough to really sell that atmosphere. But I also use this technique when helping out my friend Avi Wabian, who directed a Ghost Recon short film for Ubisoft. There was a section of the short film that they needed cutaways to soldiers in a jungle at night, and I only had a 10 by 10 space during the day inside of a warehouse while they were shooting something else to make it work, and we did the same exact technique. We just went and got as many branches and dirt that we could, brought it all in, and in a very short period of time, grabbed all the cutaway shots that we needed, which ended up cutting into the film in the end seamlessly. So just like with all these other techniques, these are things that definitely can be used on any budget level. It's about being creative and using ideas to further what you're trying to accomplish. Speaking of turning my warehouse into a jungle at night, we have the French turnaround, which is another technique that I used in that same Film Riot episode, where we didn't have enough to make a full 360 jungle, we just had the one section of warehouse set up to be that jungle at night, so when we cut to what our characters were looking at, we did what called a French turnaround, where we just shifted some stuff around and then put the other character in the same space and made it look like we were looking in the opposite direction, where in actuality, we didn't turn the camera around at all, we just shifted things around and moved our 180 to make it appear as though we were. But we also did it in a domain ad that we did where Justin and Emily are interrogating Josh, and it would have taken too much time to try to set it up both ways because of how we set up the scene and the lighting, so we just made this a French turnaround as well, since it was just a black background 
background, you cannot tell that we didn't actually flip the camera, that we just sat Josh where Justin and Emily once were. Then for my fifth filmmaking trick, we have something that I've used twice, right here, and later on right here. And that, of course, is getting your actor to fall and land all in one shot, which kind of goes in the same thought process of that stop motion effect that we did before, although not stop motion, where you're blending a few elements together all within one shot to make it work. First, of course, your actor starting at the high place and acting falling off. Of course, in the Josh version, he wasn't actually on the roof. That was green screened in as well. But then in Foot Chase, our actress was at the top and was a stunt woman, so she did actually take the fall to the ground, but to mats. So we got the first bit of her actually taking the fall to the mat. Then we removed everything, had her on the floor. She throws herself into the air and takes that final hit. And then we stitch those two together with a camera move in post and it all works together seamlessly. With Josh, it was a matter of again, green screening him onto the roof with that composite, then getting a bunch of versions of him falling on a blue screen because we didn't have a lot of room to move, stitching those together and then hitting the ground just like we did in foot chase, stitching all those pieces together with the digital camera move and it all works really seamlessly and this sort of technique can be used in a litany of ways it doesn't just have to be an actor falling from a high space and seeing the hit there are a lot of different uses for this sort of idea just like all the rest it's taking the idea and molding it into the thing that you're trying to accomplish the only bummer with the Josh version is of course right here the shirts just magically vanish that's the only thing if we wouldn't have forgot the friggin shirts that would have been a great shot but we did. But we did. We were so cold. Almost, almost, almost. I know we said five, but there's, there's six. And for that last tip, we have spray painting bulbs. We showed this a long time ago, and of course it has to be high heat spray paint, not just any kind of spray paint, but you can spray paint a bulb, any kind of color, and then you just now have a gelled light. I've used this so much, and there's a lot of applications you can do for it, like maybe creating cop lights or creating some kind of alarm system, whatever it is, just the idea of spray painting a normal bulb, and you could spray paint several, not having to buy gels, and then popping those in a can light. It's such a great, DIY technique that's so useful, so cheap, and I still use to this day. We've actually done a ton of lighting sort of hacks like that over the years that I still use to this day, like a shower curtain as diffusion, which we've shown in a recent episode that I'm still using those shower curtains all the time. I just love how those work. They work really well and are a lot easier to work with than a lot of diffusion that we have. So check those episodes out below as well, because you know, I, t I talked about them and we put links down there too, because I talked about them. So that's it. Some of my favorite filmmaking tricks that we've done over the past 10 years. But now I want to know what are some of your favorite filmmaking tricks? So post those in the comments below. And of course, check out the notes for links to everything we talked about here. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. We were so close. Almost, almost, almost.